Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 521. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my College Outset link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 516 to 523. In this video, we want to talk about the difference between arithmetic, arithmetic rounding that we learn in school and banker's rounding. Banker's rounding is also called scientific rounding, Gaussian rounding, or uh, halfway even rounding. Now here's how we have some numbers here and we want to round to the integer. Arithmetic rounding, and I actually have lots of notes. Here's how we do arithmetic rounding and banker's rounding or uh, halfway even rounding. We're going to look at, decide on a position. We're going to decide on the integer. So we're rounding to that zero right there. So we look to the right, we say, is it four, three, two, or one? If it is, we hack that off and don't add anything to the zero position to get 10. Uh, if we're rounding to the zero here and we see a five, six, seven, eight, or nine, we hack off the, all the remaining decimals and add one to the zero position to get 11. This one goes to 11 and this one goes to 10. Now lo let's look at banker's rounding and there, it's exactly the same except for when you get a 5, a 0.5 here. Now here's banker's routing. The first four steps are exactly the same as uh, arithmetic rounding, except for when you get to 5. 5, you remove all the, di oh, let's look here. When you get to 5, you say, hey, let's go to the, e the nearest even number. So here, it's either 10, which is below 10.5, or 12. So the nearest one is 10. Here, when we get to 9.5, we say, well, what's the nearest even? Well, if we go up to 10, we either have 10 or 8. Since 10 is closer, we take 10. Now, notice what happens. 5, point, this 5 right here, and this 6. In both cases, we're rounding up. Same with here, 0.5. But over here, what are we doing? This 0.5, we're actually going down to 10. And this 9.5, we're actually going up to 10. So the reason why bankers round when you have a lot of numbers is less biased um, is because when you're halfway, sometimes you're going up, like in this case, and sometimes, I'm sorry, this you're going down here, and sometimes you're going up. Whereas with the normal rule, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9 are always going up. All right, uh, and then here's an example for when we're rounding to the penny. Now let's look down here. Uh, this, uh, the reason why I'm um, doing this video here, someone sent in a question about access. They're like, why is access rounding my numbers when I bring them into Excel and I compare them to my Excel numbers? I'm getting different numbers, right? Because access does this banker's round or this um, halfway even rounding. Also, in a VBA, when you create a user defined function or use the round function in VBA, it also uses um, banker's rounding or halfway even rounding. So let's look at um, some examples here. I have about 7,000 numbers here, and then we're going to see which one is uh, less biased or which one has more error. All right, we're rounding to the integer, so we'll say round. This is just the worksheet function, round. Since we're rounding to the integer, we use a 0. When we're going to the penny, we use a 2. So I double click and send this down. Now, um, I'm going to show you a formula that Barry Houdini created, and I actually have some notes up here. There's the link for Barry Houdini's uh, formula. And here's the various manifestations of it depending on where you want to round. And we'll look at two of them. By the way, Mr. Excel also did a uh, great video on this uh, banker's rounding. And ASTM E29 has been a standard around since the 1940s. By the way, I also have a great link to Wikipedia up here uh, that talks a lot about rounding, the history of it, and everything. All right, let's do this worksheet formula from Barry Houdini, and then I'll show you how to do a user-defined uh, function in VBA. Let's start off with the interior part of this formula. Let's just see what happens when we round this number. And we're going to take that number and multiply by 10, and we're going to round it to the integer, just in case there were some other uh, 
the digits past this uh, 4 right here. Well, right now, that'll give us 100. It's just all it does is we're multiplying by 10 and rounding to the integer. So it gives us all of those numbers as integers. All right, so we come back over here. And now around this, we're going to take uh, the, use the mod function. The mod function gives you a remainder. Well, what happens when we comma and divide this by 20? Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now notice this is a there's four, five, six, and 15. Well, what's the only difference between bankers rounding one, two, three, four, and these four right here? 10, 10. So got it right there. Oh. This um, five, this point five here. There's eleven. It should be ten. This eleven is fine, and r this is all regular rounding. So regular rounding works for three of these four situations. The only one that it doesn't round for is when this mod construction divided by twenty gives us a five. So what can we do? Can we build a true/false from this? You bet. We can say that is equal to five. So now we have a true. Now from this, we can um, notice something else. And this is the ingenious uh, work of Barry Houdini here. If we were taking these four numbers right here, 10, 11, 11, 10, what would we have to do to get these numbers? The only thing is when we get this 5 popping out from here or this true, we have to subtract 1 from the regular round. So let's um, take this formula right here. This is a true, and this is a false, this is a true, this is a false. Well, we can convert this to a 1 if we put a, a minus in front of it, a double negative. But what if we just put a single negative in front of it? It gives us zeros in the three cases where we uh, the regular round would work, and a minus 1 in the exact case where uh, we need to round. We need to subtract one from the regular round to get this banker's rounding. So I'm going to come back here, and all we have to do now is do regular round. This, comma zero. Now we're rounding to the integer, so we do that, and that is the ingenious formula from uh, Barry Houdini here. Now I'm going to copy this. Let's scroll all the way down. I have 7,000 rolls. I'm going to hold Shift, click in the last cell, and then Control V. All right, now um, let's go ahead. And so that's a way to do this uh, halfway even or bankers rounding with a, a worksheet formula. There are other formulas that will work also. Uh, the, here's another one right over here. Uh, if you take the mod of that divided by 1, you get 0.5. Then you can use the M round and the round. All right, now let's see how to use uh, VBA user defined function. Now, as if any of you watch the videos, you know I always say I'm not very good at VBA, and I'm not, but I'll try and hack my way through this. Now, I'm going to go to um, the VBA editor, Alt F11, and I have uh, notes up here for how we're going to do this user defined function here. Alt F11 opens up the VBA editor. Now, over here we have our project window, and there's our workbook right there. This is the properties windows down here. And we need to insert a module. And I already have a mo couple modules in here, but we'll uh, uh, do another one. Now, I'm going to use keyboard shortcuts down here, too. You can see the I from the old menus, Alt, Insert, and Module. So I'm going to use M. This is where we write our code. Now, I'm going to Alt, Insert, Procedure. Notice the P up there. I'm going to type, um, how about halfway even. We'll call this function halfway even. And then I'm going to notice that there's an F there, Alt F. And then I notice that the OK button is highlighted. I hit Enter. And it inserts a function. Now, here's the way these user-defined functions work. This is the name of the function. When we get over to a worksheet, uh, we'll say equals this. And it will show up just like the other functions, like sum and average, etc. Now, if we put arguments here, See that num? That's going to show up as a text box in the uh, insert function dialog box, or the arguments dialog box. So we're going to need our number to round, and then we're going to type digits. Right? I'm a, such a terrible digits. Right? There's two arguments. By putting this name, comma, this name, you're telling the code behind the scene to create this function with two arguments. Now. 
copy and you have to under the the public function, but before the end function, you have to control V, the name of the function, and always type an equal sign. I'm going to use the built-in round function, round. And for the number, we're going to put our num, comma, and the number of digits, we're going to put our digits. Hopefully, I spelled it right there. Close parentheses. So for our example here, we're using a built-in function. So we put the uh, function name, equal sign, and then inside the the uh, VBA function, the actual arguments from our function up here. Now I'm going to control S, click uh, continue. So there we have it. I'm going to close this. Now I'm going to come over here, equals even. Now what did I call it? Um, I don't remember what I called it, so I'm going to click here. Go to select a category. How about user defined? Halfway, I called it halfway. That one's the one from did that's on the answer sheet. All right, there it is, num, and we're going to click on, boop, that one right there, and comma, whoops, tab, and then I'm going to type zero. By the way, the VBA function, the Excel function can do negatives, right? So you can do negative three to round to the thousand positions, or negative one to, to, to round to the ten position, but uh, this function doesn't do negatives, just 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. I'm going to click OK. Double click and send it down. Looks like it took a while to do that. Uh, but there it is. We have our uh, user defined function. Now let's come up here and all I've done is I've added up this column and put it here and I've added up each of one of our, our rounded numbers. And then when you look at the difference between the actual number and our rounded numbers, pretty big for the Excel round function and um, much, much smaller. So that's why uh, uh, this is sometimes called unbiased or uh, scientific or uh, banker's rounding because it uh, tends to, over a large number of values, be much more accurate. And again, it makes um, sense. The reason why it makes sense is because 4, 3, 2, 1, we're going down. 6, 7, 8, 9, we're going up. The one in the middle, since we're using this even rule, sometimes it goes down, sometimes goes up. So the one right in the middle could be either or. So obviously that's going to lead to less error. Now, this was for the integer. If you scroll over here, <coughs> you can download this workbook if you want. Uh, this one just is doing it to the... Uh, the penny, right? And here's even a different formula here, one that I hacked together. Uh -huh. And so, and then here's the differences. With the pennies, it's still the uh, round function Excel much bigger. Now, I want you to notice something. What happened here? When we were rounding, we had these numbers here, and we're rounding to the penny, but there's only one extra digit. Same with over here. We have our integer and then one extra digit. If you have lots of digits, I think I have 15 significant digits here, then uh, n all of these methods are rather close. There's no um, particular benefit. So that is um, some banker's rounding. Uh, a great formula from Barry Houdini, how to use a user-defined function. Um, and we learned that access, the uh, VBA round function, both use this kind of uh, halfway to even rule and then the Excel round function in the spreadsheet does not. It uses the standard rule we learn in school and there can be differences. All right, we'll see you next trip.